Hi, hello, and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little different. This is something that I'm kind of calling an inverse painting. I'm sure there's an actual term for it, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. If you do know, let me know in the comments. For this, we're actually going to be making a really nice, thick, pigmented, solid background. I'm personally using the Viviva watercolors because I love how pigmented these are. I have tried this with other watercolors too, and it definitely works with them as well. So use whatever you have. You don't have to have these to do them, but they do work really nice for this. The big difference in this painting is the subject is actually going to be completely lifted out. So rather than actually painting the subject carefully, we're going to be removing it from the background. In order to do this, you want to start off with a super pigmented background, drop in a whole bunch of different colors while it's still wet, perhaps encourage some back blooms to happen by dropping in some water while it's starting to dry so it has a little bit of texture. Go ahead and use whatever colors you want that you think will be complementary for this little jellyfish and just make the background how you want it to look. Just make sure it's super pigmented and you really put a bunch of that paint on there. Then you want to let this dry completely. By letting it dry completely, we can control where the water is actually going to lift from and get some nice crisp lines. And then take a brush and some water and actually start to wet the area that you want to make the shape of the jellyfish. I'm starting with the top kind of bell-like shape. So I just wet that area, make sure it's nice and saturated, but I try to stay within the lines that I'm painting that water on. And then I just take a paper towel and carefully dab it on there so that it's not smudging and I'm just lifting this up. At first it's not going to look like much, but you do this a few times and a few things are going to happen. One, you're going to lift more of the pigment from the actual bell of that jellyfish. And two, it will actually create a little bit of an outline because some of that pigment is going to settle right around the edges of where you have been wetting and lifting. Do that until you start to see a really good shape of this jellyfish start to form. It doesn't need to be fully lifted or perfect at this point, but you do want to know kind of where it's at before you start doing some of the other steps. Once you're happy with it, you can actually define the underside of the bell as if you can see a little bit into the center of the jellyfish from underneath it. And then they often have these kind of fluffy, floaty tentacles in the middle. So you want to create some kind of undefined lifted areas that come out from the center there and be real loose with this. The looser, the better. Similar to the stage above, what you're going to do is add some water, lift, add some more water, lift until you are happy with it. And then you're going to add on those little tentacles. This one's a little bit harder to do because the paper towel is, uh, it's harder to get it on there, but you can use the paper towel. I found that just repeatedly putting strokes of water over these with a clean, damp brush for the small tentacles actually ends up creating pretty defined lines and pushing the pigment to the side so you can actually see the little tiny tentacles and it's kind of hints to them, which is nice because the jellyfish don't often have super defined tentacles. Repeat these steps until you are happy with the amount that you have lifted out, and then you can leave it here if you want to keep this kind of ethereal and hinting to a jellyfish. It looks a little haunting as if you were in the water and you weren't quite sure what you were seeing because maybe it was a little dark or a little cloudy. If you want to further define your jellyfish, at this point is a great time to pop out one of your white gel pencils and further define those features lightly. Uh, you'll see here when I actually put that, it's a white gouache pen, especially to get a little bit of a sheen on the top of that bell in order to create a nice convex shape. I will scribble a little bit and before it sets, I will tap my finger to soften that and you can add as many details as you want. And now that you've added the details you want, or maybe you've left it how you, how you had it before, but you added maybe some more jellyfish, you are done. You've done an inverse watercolor painting. Let me know if you've tried this technique before. It's super fun to do, and I really like how this turned out. I think it'd be fun to do this with a whole seascape type thing, but uh, I'm gonna start with the jellyfish for now. 
Also, I really love seeing what you create, especially if you use one of my tutorials to do it. And the best way to share that with me is through Instagram. You can actually send me messages or you can tag me in your posts on Instagram, either through my Lacey Walker art or my Rebel Unicorn Crafts account. And it really brightens my day. If you want to see more testing videos where I test out different variables for fluid painting, want to see any watercolor tutorials or some other art supply testing, subscribe to my channel. Or if you just want to see some of the art that I create, it's really varied. You can follow me either at Lacey Walker Art or at Rebel Unicorn Crafts on Instagram or Rebel Unicorn Crafts on TikTok where I make some, some funny videos as well as some tool talk videos and... I hope that you have a magically creative day.